Avengers issue number 19, legacy number 719. They must have counted No Road Home in the legacy numbering because it wasn't like that. Remember, number 10 was also 700. Chillmonger remembers. So is it a worthwhile tie-in comic with the War of Realms? Nah. Or if you're an Avengers reader and this is something you subscribe to monthly, or I think it's every three weeks, worth the money, worth the story, you got everything you wanted, sprinkled in with a lot of War of the Realms. So it served that purpose, but if you're looking for, I need to know the skinny on the whole War of Realms event, skip on this, you can skip on Squirrel Girl, you can skip on all of them. Is there a single relevant of a War of the Realms tie-in comic? I don't think so. I like that Strike Force one. Whichever the one with the Punisher and Blade and Ghost Rider and She-Hulk. That was cool. That was worth reading. Enhanced my experience. Uh, I would recommend that one. I haven't read another one. Journey into Mystery, man. The New Agents of Atlas. It was. I, I've got to read the second one, which is right here. I'll probably review it. But uh, well, Uncanny X-Men, entertaining again for an X-Men fan. Not entertaining War of the Realms. Uh, so this comic came out this week. Could have came out last week in between issues number three and issues number four of War of Realms. This, I can't think of a single thing that happened in this comic book that hasn't already happened in issue number three or by four of War of the Realms. I'm just going to say that the comic was late because Ed McGuinness was going in on his art, which he does. The book opens up with uh, Gorilla Man speaking. That's what that brown text box is for. And he's out here in a secret meeting with Ursa. Ursa Major is actually a good guy. He's a double agent working for T'Challa. Well, good as a point of view. Um, he's working with the Avengers. So um, he's not the only double agent in this comic. I'll just skip over to the ending. Spoiler alert. Gorilla Man is also working for the vampires. He wanted to get out of that deal where you kill a Gorilla Man live forever. He made negotiation with the vampires. Man, I was cheering for him this whole comic. And then they go and do that to me. It's just like that Gibbon story with Amazing Spider-Man where they turned on me and made me think well, another way of feeling a different. So we get some intel on the Avengers Mountain. The Celestial Armor is the hardest on Earth. And they said something like, uh, well, the enemies we're facing are not from Earth, so we don't know what they're going to bring. They, maybe they can pierce the armor. But saying it's the hardest thing on Earth makes me think of vibranium, diamonds, anything else that's the hardest thing on Earth. I guess this is now. He gets powers, the Avengers Mountain, from the core of the Earth because the celestial mumbo-jumbo makes sense to me, though. And that's why this celestial uh, husk of a body can still shoot out stuff and, and do the amazing things that he can. As long as you explain your science, I'm good. By the way, Ed McGuinness was drawing this comic book. Look at that stuff. There's not even, like, how do you explain it? Where's the panels? Where's the line saying, well, you got to draw Black Panther here. No, this is just straight up. Go crazy. Art is phenomenal. Sometimes the art has nothing to do with the freaking story. All I see is, uh, look, look how epic Captain America is. And there's the next page, I think it's Captain Marvel on the very next page, where she's just flying alongside with uh, Lady Sif. That's just beautiful stuff right there. I wish, now I'm happy he's drawing the Avengers because I get to see all my favorites drawn up by Ed McGuinness. I'm waiting for that Wolverine Ed McGuinness. Snicked, snicked. Snicked. Moving on. So, uh, Gorilla Man is the hero of the comic because he's out doing his uh, science stuff, according to Tony Stark, and he, in the nick of time, defeats those, the, the, the Dark Elves, who teleported in with the Black Bifrost, which is no more as of issue number four of War of the Realm, that's what I mean. So, he's the hero of the day, the little uh, eyes awaken, and that's where we get the energy from, he did it in the nick of time. All the people who were transported by Doctor Strange who got some love. He was the MVP of issue 2 of War of Realms. Uh, all them people in New York are safe. They called it the safest place in the world. Now, while he was down there, you know, getting jiggy with the celestial body, we find out, he finds out, that he was talked to by a god. Roxxon Corp is in the South Pole, Antarctica, which just dawned on me now that that's why they had Kang, well, not Kang, his name starts with a K. Kazar is his name, and he got some screen time in this comic book. Living in Antarctica, living where the Savage Land is, that's where Roxxon is, I can assume that's where the next comic issue is going to take place. Does the cover for issue 20 reveal any of that? Not necessarily, no, but it looks pretty fire, and I'm sure Ed McGuinness is drawing that because it looks like... because it looks good, period. Straight up. Avengers 
number 19. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 because it wasn't magnificent. Uh, art was really good. Maybe it's more than a 7 out of 10, but we'll, you know, don't take my uh, opinion as gospel. You have money and you have opinions of yourself. You also have an opinion. You can thumbs up or thumbs up this video. I appreciate it if you did that. The name on the channel is Chillmonger. Don't be afraid to subscribe.